By this point, we've seen that DNA is a double helix molecule with two strands, and those strands are polymers of nucleotides. So let's take a closer look at the structure of a nucleotide before we consider how they polymerize into the strand of DNA. So a nucleotide has three subunits. It's got a sugar, which I've drawn here in green. It's got a phosphate, which I've drawn in pink, and it has a base. So remember that the sugar is always a deoxyribose, right, a five carbon sugar with a hydrogen here instead of an oxygen. And while the sugar is always the same, the base can vary, right? The base can be an adenine, a thymine, a cytosine, or a guanine. And also remember that we number the carbons in a sugar so that we can refer to particular ones. And so going clockwise from the oxygen, this carbon is the one prime carbon, this one is two prime, this one is three, this one is four, and the methyl group that's hanging off here outside of the ring is the five prime carbon. And it's to the five prime carbon that the phosphate group is linked. And so a strand of DNA is constructed by linking together the phosphate of one nucleotide to the five prime carbon of another, well, excuse me, not the five prime carbon, the three prime carbon, there we go, of another one. All right, this one is the five prime carbon. This linkage between two nucleotides across this phosphate group is called a phosphodiester bond. And also, note that the DNA is an acid, right? That's what the letters DNA stand for, deoxyribonucleic acid. And that each of these phosphate groups, thus, has a negative charge at a pH of 7. Note that I've also gone ahead and drawn some bases here, right? So this base right here is an adenine. This base is a guanine. This base is a thymine. And this base is a cytosine. Note that the adenine and the guanine have two rings in them, and so they're called purines. And while thymine and cytosine each of these bases has one ring, and we call them pyrimidines. And there's a quick note before we move on. If I show you this molecule right here, and I ask you to read off the sequence of bases, do you read it A and then G, or do you read it G and then, and, uh, and then A? And it turns out that there actually is a right answer. By convention, we by convention, we read the bases off of a strand of DNA in the five prime to three prime direction. And so the, and so if it's five prime and then three prime and then five prime and then three prime, we read the A first and the G next. The five prime here is at the top and the three prime end of this strand of DNA is down at the bottom. And so note, that I've drawn one strand here with a pair of bases, and I've drawn another strand here with the complementary bases. And when you consider this strand, there are a couple of important things to note. And the first is that it is upside down compared to this one, right? So note that on this one, the five prime carbon is up and the three prime carbon is down. Whereas note on this one, the three prime carbon is at the top, and the five prime carbon is at the bottom. We say that the two strands of DNA run anti-parallel to each other. So if one of them is five prime to three prime this way, the other one is five prime to three prime the other direction. Also note that the correspondent, the, the bases that pair up with each other, it's always two rings and one ring. It's always a purine and a pyrimidine. Um, so A on one side and T on the other, G on one side and C on the other. Finally, note that these bases interact with hydrogen bonds. And so there's a hydrogen bond there, there, and there. 
and there's a hydrogen bond there and there. The fact that G and C have three hydrogen bonds and A and T only have two is actually also relatively important because if I am going to duplicate this molecule, if I'm going to um, synthesize a new DNA molecule or I'm going to transcribe it into a piece of RNA, I'm going to have to unzip this molecule. And it actually takes more energy to separate an adenine thymine pair than a guanine cytosine pair because the adenine and thymine have two hydrogen bonds connecting them and the guanine and cytosine have three. So if this is the molecular structure of DNA, what are the takeaways, right? There's a lot of detail here. Here are the important features of DNA to keep in your head as, you, as we move forward. First, DNA is double-stranded. And the double-stranded nature, of course, is what makes it easy to copy, right? The Watson-Crick um, base pairing. And actually, that Watson-Crick base pairing, again, adenine to thymine, guanine to cytosine, that is invariant, right? That is always the way that these base pairs line up. And of course, the phosphate sugar backbone stays the same while the bases differ, right? And so it's that sequence of bases that encodes the information. Fourth, it will be important to remember that this molecule is negatively charged, right? At body pH of a little more than seven, these oxygens each carry a formal negative charge to them, which makes the entire molecule negatively charged. And finally, while the backbone is connected with covalent bonds, right, these phosphodiester bonds, the two strands themselves are only connected with hydrogen bonds, right? And hydrogen bonds are much weaker than covalent bonds, right? Which means that it doesn't take much energy much heat in particular to melt these two strands apart and end up with single-stranded DNA. And so these properties, right, the double-strandedness, the Watson-Crick base pairing, the negative charge, these hydrogen bonds, these are some of the chemical bases for some of the most important methods for separating and identifying nucleic acids. And those methods are next.